Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and ever since I got my La Pizza Piccolo wood-fired oven, you guys have been asking, dojo or pizza oven? Pizza oven or dojo? So today, we're gonna do a battle of the titans and put them head to head and see if you can taste the difference between charcoal versus wood fuel in a pizza oven, and which turns out the favorite, or the family's favorite, pizza pie. Now, one of the things that I've learned a ton in my quest to improve my pizza game since getting a proper dedicated pizza oven is the importance of dough and hydration. And so a lot of the doughs that I use are just uh, too quick of a cure to be ready to withstand the abuse that a wood-fired pizza oven can throw at it. So if we do a little bit of a chart here and sort of go up to the right, the quick one hour uh, set it and get ready to cook is uh, often good for a low temperature range, like four or 500 degrees Fahrenheit. If we want to move all the way over to the high temperature, uh, we need a longer uh, set time. So we're going to be 24 hours in order to withstand that seven, eight, 900 uh, degree temperatures that the wood-fired pizza oven can produce. So uh, the dough is still just as easy to make. Uh, we just want to do this a day uh, in advance. So let me take you back to yesterday, share a simple pizza dough recipe that you can use either on your Kamado Joe or a wood-fired pizza oven and turn out something that can withstand the temperatures that we're going to be cooking at today. I'll rejoin you when it's time to fire up our grills. Okay, we have two pizzas ready to go. We're nearly up to temperature. So I wanna walk through now just fire management and the two different approaches that we'll take, whether we're doing this on the Kamado Joe with the Dojo or on a wood-fired pizza oven. But before we do, a quick word from today's sponsor. Thanks, Original Grain, for sponsoring today's video. Now, I know you really come for the fashion and stay for the barbecue, like my rockin' Hawaiian shirts or plaid in winter, and of course, Crocs 365 days a year, but I actually think you're gonna love what I'm sharing with you today. If you've been following my channel for a while, you already know I'm a big fan of brands that are doing their part to leave the earth a better place than we found it. And that's one of the things I think Original Grain has a really cool story. Not only are they founded by two brothers who are both vets out of the Pacific Northwest, they plant a new tree for every watch that they sell. So there's over 500,000 new trees thanks to Original Grain and people like you and I doing our part to uh, support environmentally sustainable companies. They're also using reclaimed materials. So this includes things like 100% recycled ocean plastics to reclaimed woods. So one of the things I was looking for to go with my Hawaiian shirt is some uh, Hawaiian wood like the one featured uh, in the watch that I'm showing you here today, which is made from naturally fallen trees. No, uh, no trees were cut down for making these products. And there's a bunch of other cool materials at use here, including uh, German reclaimed uh, oak beer barrels to whiskey bourbon barrels to natural fallen pine. As part of that is behind the uh, partnership with Yellowstone National Parks. So in addition to doing right by the environment, I think you're going to love some other features that Original Grain has for people like me and you, uh, which is grilling. So I'm sporting the Grillmaster Mesquite uh, 44 millimeter chrono, and it comes with a 20 minute dedicated timer. That's one of the things uh, in terms of analog watches that can be difficult is keeping track of exactly where you are. If you wanna do your steak at eight minutes aside, depending on how you're cooking it, uh, you know, if, depending on the time of day and exactly where you were, it can be a little bit difficult to keep track. And so with the press of a button, there is a dedicated timer to go anywhere from zero to 20 minutes and we can keep a very precise time so we know exactly where we are in our cook without needing to break out any of the, the wireless or the technology we can go 100% old school just worry about managing our fire managing our steak without overcooking anything I think you're absolutely gonna love it 
So I've got a smoking deal to share with you as well. That's actually the deal, that's the code. Go to originalgrain.com and enter in smoking and any deals that are on like the Black Friday 20% off, you'll get an additional 10 for a total of 30% savings. That's gonna be the lowest price of the entire holiday season. So if you've got someone in your life you think would be absolutely a fan of the watch like the one I'm sporting for with the grilling timer or any other Original Grain products, Go to originalgrain.com and use the code SMOKING to save 30% off your order. Thanks again, Original Grain, for sponsoring today's video. And thanks to everybody who goes and checks out these links down below. It's one of the ways I'm able to keep the channel going. So thanks again, Original Grain, for sponsoring today's video. Now, back to the action. Okay, fire management, whether we're doing this on the Kamado or on a wood-fired pizza oven. Uh, so starting with the Kamado, I get the question, all the time, James, I can't reach above 500 degrees on my dojo. So there could be a couple things going on. First, let's eliminate the obvious airflow restrictions. Make sure, again, you've cleaned everything out. I'm assuming you've already done that. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you have a charcoal that burns hot. Uh, the three that I've used over the last couple of years have been Jealous Devil, Komodo Joe, uh, as well as Fogo Super Premium or the regular. And all three of those can hit the temperature. I'm using Fogo Super Premium today where we won't have any issues hitting temperature. So make sure you've got a charcoal. There are some, you know, Costco sells them from time to time. They're a great value, but little chips, dust, ash, and if it's a softwood versus a hardwood, it won't give you the BTU that you need. So assuming we've already cleared all of those variables uh, and are still uh, struggling to hit a higher temperature, there's two common things that can happen. So the first thing that I like to do is when I get ready to install my dojo, once my dome is heat soaked and sitting around 500 degrees, 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna install the dojo, is toss in an extra large piece or two of charcoal that fell out of the bag when I was filling the basket. By adding that at this stage, it's gonna give us some fresh firepower in order to come up to the uh, 650, 700 degrees. We don't, gonna, we don't wanna go above 700 degrees, but near that level, uh, if that's the temperature that we want to be cooking at. The second thing to pay attention to here is our vent settings. And this is a very common error that I hear from people who have reached out, is you forget to close your daisy wheel or your control tower top. If we don't do that, all of our heat is racing right out the top and it's not coming over and registering on our uh, temperature gauge on the dome. And we're sitting here like, okay, I just gotta wait longer. Meanwhile, your charcoal pile is burning all the way down and all that heat is going up. So at this point, as soon as we install the dojo, you want to control, uh, close your control tower top or your daisy wheel. On the pizza oven, we have a couple things that uh, I've learned uh, in my six months or so of playing with it in terms of fire management. And most of it's coming directly out of my offset learnings. So I'll be using uh, oak wood for today, not only for our temperature, but also our flavor. And so what I've learned uh, from my offset and applied to my pizza oven is there's two types of fire. So let me bring you nice and close and I'll walk you through how I set up for today's pizza. So our first type of fire is going to be optimizing for getting some flames up. So that's where we might have a piece of wood on the bottom and start to allow good airflow uh, underneath and all around the wood so that we get the flame arcing up and over. This is gonna be a really good fire for heating the deck of our pizza oven as well as heat soaking the dome. So we get all three heat properties, our convection airflow, our radiant uh, cooking from the dome being heat soaked as well as our conduction energy from the deck of the pizza oven itself. But I found that this can be a little bit too aggressive, especially with you know about 12 inch size splits that that flame rolling all the way over has a tendency to want to burn the top of our pizza before the bottom is done, even though the bottom will be done anywhere between 60 and 120 seconds. So what I like to do after that is when we add our wood for cooking wood after we've maybe been lit for about 20 minutes is start to go with more of a knockdown fire, the same uh, as what you might use in your offset. So we're gonna get our wood splits really close together. So we'd push any of the, the coals that we have in the middle of these and then place our flatter pieces that come out of the bag on a 45 degree angle over top. So I've got two flat looking pieces here. And what this is gonna do is allow us to continue to get constant heat from our fire. It's gonna last much longer, but more importantly, this is gonna hold the fire back down in terms of temperature. So instead of in open bushfire temperatures, we're gonna be more in a fire running in that 700, 800 degree range, which is going to give us the flavor of wood itself. And this is what really sets a wood-fired pizza oven apart from something whether it's propane, pellets, or charcoal. Let's go check on our uh, fire and see if we're ready to get our pizza on. 
So pizza, like all cooks, I guess, technically fall into this, but this is one of those cooks you have to be paying attention. And since it's just me this weekend, managing the pizzas and two different ovens and recording and trying to bring you along, uh, I don't want to uh, mess up trying to do too many things at once. So I'm gonna cook one pizza at a time, so there'll be about two minutes uh, difference between when they come off, but I don't think that will impact the result. Since the Kamado Joe uh, is limited to 700 degrees, otherwise we run the risk of damaging our dojo. Uh, damaging could, uh, show up in a couple ways. One, we could uh, destroy our gasket underneath if we're going too hot because that's just hot metal sitting on the gasket. It can release the glue. If that happens, you're going to want to fix that right away. Otherwise, if you let your gasket continue to deteriorate and fall in the fire, you'll need a brand new replacement. But it's easily salvaged at that point if it comes uh, unglued. The other things that could happen if we let it go too hot and exceed that 700 degree rating is we could start to melt the uh, bottom of our handle. Our handle is sitting with just about a half inch of clearance uh, from that exit from the pizza oven uh, accessory and so if we get a little bit too hot we could melt our plastic we don't want that and last but not least if you just throw caution to the wind and run an inferno fire uh, you know I've seen pictures online in Facebook groups where people have melted the tabs that are holding our heat deflectors those are heavy sitting on tabs and if you cook uh, charcoal burns at 1100 degrees so if you want to uh, you can melt metal if you're not careful and so those are all good reasons that we want to stay within the 700 degree Fahrenheit range that is recommended from uh, Kamado Joe, but that also means our pizza is going to take a little bit longer. Once we are at 700 degrees, I'll give you, or below 700 degrees, 650 is going to be ideal. I'll give you a, uh, a pizza stone temperature using my Thermoworks uh, IR gun so we know what we're cooking at. And then uh, I suspect our pizza oven, uh, which I know regularly sees, you know, seven, eight, even sometimes 900 degrees, uh, that that is going to cook in 60 to 90 seconds tops. So we'll get it on the uh, dojo first, let it rest. I'll get the other on the pizza oven and meet you over here for our taste test after our cook. Those look pretty good to me. Let me bring you nice and close. We'll get some slices and dive in for our taste test. On my left is the Kamado jo Dojo and on my right is the wood fired pizza oven. So they're in the same order of the two ovens. Bring you nice and close. We'll get a slice. Wood pizza oven first here. Good bounce back on the, oh bees. Good bounce back on the dough. Let's try the Dojo. Same dough, seems pretty similar for bounce. Let's grab a piece of each for our taste test. Start with our dojo piece since it's been sitting here the longest. Mm. Good pizza. Nothing wrong with that. Let's dive into our wood-fired pizza oven. See if we can get a difference. Mm. There's a difference. This is so good. I'm gonna have this whole thing finished. I actually forgot to point out, taking a look at the bottom, you can actually taste this like cooked very quickly. We're getting a bit of a crust, a little bit of leopard print. Whereas I found the dough came up a little bit thicker on the dojo, maybe just that extra time to bake. We're about five minutes versus one minute. So the margarita pizza here from the wood-fired oven stayed a little bit thinner and is packing a whole extra element of flavor here. That is ridiculous. Now, if I had only had the Dojo pizza, I would have told you that this is better than any restaurant or takeout pizza that you can get. And I still think that's true. And for a couple hundred bucks for the Dojo accessory, you can even save, I think Smokeware is bringing them in. My code is good there to save 10%, so you save 30 bucks. This is a great way to add an occasional pizza. If you cook pizza maybe once, twice a year, this is a great add-on for a couple hundred dollars. But, oh my goodness, I am only six months into my journey of learning and perfecting dough and my wood-fired pizza oven technique, but there's something to this. It's just packing that flavor. And so based on how we oriented our logs, both for heat as well as uh, flavor, you're getting a wood-fired pizza here that you can absolutely taste the difference. The, the two almost night and day in terms of the flavor profile. And that is something that any uh, pizza oven that I've cooked off of or had at a friend's house where it's propane or pellets or even charcoal, it just doesn't pack this punch of flavor. I don't know how to describe it. If I use the offset example with briskets, where I've done an example, it's like the dry brine, the flavor is all the way in and you're getting that hint of wood flavor here all the way through every bite. It's super pleasant. I wanna keep eating it. 
thanks so much for asking. I, I know we've been waiting a while to do this to compare a Dojo versus a pizza oven. Hard to get them side by side until I eventually got my own and we can get these really heavy, uh, expensive ovens side by side and pull this off. If there's another head to head you'd like to do, uh, have me do, let me know down in the comments down below and I'll be sure to do that. That's it for today though. I'm James from Soak and Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.